Hi guys, Joe here. I'm um, doing a little test video here, testing out my uh, new interview mic. It's a uh, AT. Uh, here, I'll show it to you. There we are. The uh, Audio Technica ATA 8004L. Um, I bought it to bring it up with me to uh, Penny Arcade Expo Prime in Seattle here in a couple of weeks. And so what I'm doing is actually I'm testing it uh, with my uh, Kodak ZI8 camera recorder to make sure it works and I'm doing that by uh, sort of giving you a look at my bookcase uh, these are my uh, some of my ornaments my Star Trek ornaments you have uh, McCoy on the left Kirk on his chair on the in the middle and Spock in, at his station on the right and some of the Starships Enterprise the uh, movie era and the original series and the Enterprise E okay so let's look at my uh, my shelf here uh, I'm flick the switch here. There, I guess that didn't help. So what we have here are some of my games. There's uh, Mutants and Masterminds Third Edition and DC Adventures, which uh, both use the same basic system. We have the. Here, let me get it out for you. We have the Doctor Who TARDIS Handbook with the Eleventh Doctor logo. We have a book called Take Your Eye Off the Ball. If you have not if you have not seen this book, I do highly recommend that you read it, especially if you're a newbie to football. Uh, it's a very good book. I really liked it. It really helped me with uh, my football watching. We have a couple of my question writing references. The uh, New York Times Essential Guide to Essential Knowledge, the second edition, I believe it is. 15,003 Answers, the second edition of 10,000 Answers. The Knowledge Book from National Geographic. Now, I don't ever expect to use these two books. These are from the Dungeons & Dragons Essentials line, the Rules Compendium, the Heroes of the Fallen Lands. Maybe I'll bring them to PAX, I don't know. There's another one of my reference books, the Cultural Literacy Trivia Guide. Uh, fantasy Football. I am only in my second year of Fantasy Football, starting this year. Uh, the first year, my team, the Imperial Republican Dreadnought Wackaloons and Lugs League with Tim Connolly, they won their regular division championship. And they got to, they won, I think, the first game of the playoffs and got knocked out in the second round. Hopefully, I'll do better this year. This year, I have two teams, the Wackaloons and the, let's see here, the American Pinkie Pie Rangers in Carl Chenier's League. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, a couple of books on dice games, including the one from Reiner Nizia. We have The Story of Poker, Cowboys Full by James McManus, who also wrote Pos Positively Fifth Street. This is a great book. Great, great book, as is the one next to it. In fact, I'll give you a look. The Professor, the Banker, and the Suicide King. About some of the poker, the big money poker games uh, with, uh, I think it's Doyle Brunson and Johnny Chan and some of the big Vegas pros against Dallas Banker, the Dallas, Texas Banker, and Andy Beal. With a, just a terrific read. It's, this is in paperback. It's pretty dirt cheap. I do recommend you pick it up. We have a book on uh, Internet Hold'em Poker. <laughs> Uh, then we have Practical Poker Math. This is a pretty, that's more in, about Hold'em and uh, Omaha odds than anything else. We have Lee Jones's seminal work, the third edition of Winning Low Limit Hold'em. We have two, three books, I'm sorry, four books on home poker. We have Dealer's Choice by James Ernest, James, that's right, James, James Ernst of Cheap Ass Games, along with artist Phil Foglio and game designer Mike Selinker. Pretty cool. Home we have the Home Poker Handbook by Roy Cook of Real Poker and John Bond. We have my particular favorite of on home poker, I think is out of print now, uh, called Poker Night, Winning at the Home the, at the Casino and Beyond by John Vorhas, best known for his killer poker books. And we have one called Real Poker Night by Henry Stevenson. This one's pretty good, but it's a little stuffy. It kind of thumbs its nose on games like what you'd find in Dealer's Choice. But it's still a pretty good book. All four of these are good, I, but I recommend Poker Night particularly if you can find it. <laughs> we have the real, t the Full Tilt Poker Strategy Guide. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Full Tilt is in the toilet right now. That's too bad. And we have Gus Hansen's cool book, Every Hand Revealed. If you've not read that, I do recommend it. We have a book on Pot, Om on pot Limit Omaha Poker by Jeff Wang of The Motley Fool. Uh, he uh, actually managed to get a uh, a column in Card Player Magazine because of his work in this book. Good, it's, it's about the same cost as Every Hand Revealed. You'll notice it's the same publisher. 
it, it's good stuff I recommend it we have small stakes hold'em uh, by let's see here this is this is from two and two plus two publishing David Sklansky and Maz Mason Lamuth and Ed Miller we have Phil uh, Phil Gordon's Little Green Book which is uh, his stuff on Nolan and Hold'em now we get into the role-playing stuff we have all my Pathfinder but well not all of them I have two hard covers from that series on my table over here we have the newest one ultimate combat and buried under here someplace is ultimate magic but uh, I have most of my uh, Pathfinder stuff over here I only recently started picking some of these up I'm gonna probably bring some of it with me to uh, to PAX this year because I want to play it I mean I can't find anybody to play this with this is like the number one and number two role-playing game in the country right now which is ridiculous we have all my Star Wars Saga Edition stuff Wizards of the Coast, you fail. Really, you guys should still be producing this, but too bad. But I, this is a complete set of all the books. Uh, I ought to do a review on these, because this, this is really good stuff. It really is. This is probably some of uh, Wizards' best stuff, I think. And then we have my complete collection. Well, no, I don't think it is the complete collection. Let me see here. Do I have... Yes, it is. This is a complete... Set. No, it isn't. I'm trying to think what I'm missing here. I'm looking at this... Uh, that's right, I'm missing four bastards. I have everything else. Uh, this is of a game called Feng Shui, which is the role-playing game for the old, the old collectible card game Shadow Fist. This is another really fun one that I would like to play more of. And then we have some of my D20 stuff. We have the Babylon 5 role-playing game from Mongoose. We have a nearly complete collection of the first edition of Spycraft. We have the Spycraft second edition. We have Stargate SG-1, which was fun. We have some Palladium books. We have my Alternative books. Buried in the back, I think. Uh, let me see here. Can you see that? I think you can barely see it. My Tenshi Muyo RPG. I'm not a big anime guy, but that's... I'm a big fan of that, I have to admit. And then we have some White Wolf books here from the uh, Eon Trinity series, the Trinity Universe, the three core books, and soft cover of Trinity, Aberrant, and Adventure. Ad Adventure? Adventure, excuse me. And some uh, Trinity Split books. Now we get into... Here we go. There we go. We have my Savage World stuff. And off next to it, the game that inspired it, Deadlands Classic. I am a huge Deadlands mark, and I am hoping very much to get a chance to play some Deadlands this month, this, uh, this coming uh, August. This is August. What am I talking about? In the next couple of weeks, I'll probably, you can see in there, the the Explorer's Edition of both of the core book and the Necessary Evil Super super Villains setting. I also have the uh, the, uh, the new Action Adventure decks in some place back there. It is. There it is, the Oversized Action deck and my Deadlands dice, which will probably be going up there with me. I have all my Star Trek role-playing games. <sighs> which I, oh man, you know, this is the uh, the last unicorn version and the, deci the decipher version. A uh, couple of miscellaneous games here. The core book for D6 Adventure, which is their modern book from West End Games. We have Basic Action Superheroes, which is supposed to be pretty good. The, a limited edition version of Silver Age Sentinels. We have the Fusion print-on-demand sci-fi game Lightspeed. Haven City and Violence from Lewis Porter Jr., the Battlestar Galactica role-playing game, and the Angel role-playing game. Those those last two from their respective uh, uh, television series. And then we have a few cookbooks down here. We have... Actually, that's not a cookbook. That's the sports book. That's actually... That's covered in ast the cover is AstroTurf, if you can believe that. That's from uh, DK... I think it's DK is what they're called. DK Books known for their visual guides, along with uh, the first two volumes of the Good Eat series, the third one coming out here very soon, both from Alton Brown, along with his first two books, I'm Just Here for the Food, and I'm Just Here for More Food. And then let me sit down, and we can look at the rest of this. There we are. We have The Dangerous Book for Boys. Yes, I actually bought that. We have The Barbecue Bible from by uh, Stephen Rachel. We have Hamburger America. We have a couple of books on craft beer. We have Tasting Beer by... I forgot what the... Mosh is the last name. I forgot what his first name was. I failed. 
and Red, White, and Brew, which I actually picked up while I was at the Stone Brewery uh, Cinco de Mayo last year. We have a book called White Collar Bo Boxing by John Oden, who's a st uh, stockbroker in New York who, picked, who took up boxing as a hobby. We have Peter Marshall's seminal uh, biography, shall we say, of the Hollywood Square. It's called Backstage with the Original Hollywood Square, and this one is... autographed by the author. I actually got this autographed at the uh, first game show week taping of the the Hollywood Squares in, in 2002 at CBS Television City. Here's another autographed book by the author. That's Johnny Olson, A Voice in Time, autographed by his the author of the book and the, his protege, an, the announcer Randy West. Very, this is a good book too. He uh, he actually makes it adds a bit of relevance to it by tying Johnny's story in with the story of broadcasting as a whole. It's a really good read. Check it out. We have Bob, Bob Harris's uh, guide, shall we say? He, it's disguised as a biography, but it's really a strategy guide to being on Jeopardy. Prisoner of Tribekistan, a decade in Jeopardy. Neat book. We have Ken Jennings' book, Bra Brainiac. Did I get this one autographed? Let me look. I think I probably did because let me see here I'm in the middle of there it is there's the autograph from the man himself I was in, I still haven't need to finish reading this but uh, this has been had a profound effect on some of my thinking I should say if you've not read that do check that out we have brain men about a British pub quiz quiz pub, pub, uh, quizzing in Britain I think it is I I picked that up. I think I got it in a used bookstore some years ago. We have Hobby Games the 100 Best from Green, Ro uh, Green Ronin Pro Publishing. That's a neat book. Uh, we have How to Draw a Manga. <laughs> it's an experiment. Uh, I don't have anything to show you, but I won't worry about that. And then also down in here, let me dig some of these out instead of trying to make you squint. We have from me at you. We have a copy of The 7% Solution. This is a Sherlock Holmes novel written by Nicholas Meyer. If you recognize that name, you should probably, you've should you probably seen Star Trek II. That's the same guy. He actually is a more of a writer than a, fil a film director, and this was one of his first books, I believe. I'm trying to think. I believe it was, in fact, translated in, into a film, but somebody else directed it. Uh, I haven't quite read through this, but I need to because it's supposed to be pretty good. And then, this was a tie-in version of the book Rope Burns. Uh, the the uh, but of course you probably know it better as Million Dollar Baby. That there's actually one specific story. This is an anthology from FX Tool. That's actually his uh, a pen name. He was a, a professional boxing cut man. Uh, the uh, book, the story in the book uh, pretty, follows the film pretty closely, but it actually combines two different stories. Um, let's see, I believe one Million Dollar Baby is one, the other I believe is Frozen Water. Let me see here, let me open the... Uh, I don't think you can read that. Wait a minute. There, now you can see it. Frozen Water. That combines... A Million Dollar Baby and Frozen Water into two, one particular story. One film, I should say. Uh, good stories. I, this is actually a very good uh, book here. I do recommend it if you can find it either in that form or as the Million Dollar Baby tie-in. Now I have, And then I have some other things over here. I'm probably going to take some of this to packs with me. I know I'm going to be taking these with me. Three Dragon Ante. I love that game. Maybe I'll bring my uh, Voltron Monster Apocalypse game with me. Uh, let's see what else I have. This is one of my favorite new games right now. Puzzle, uh, that's right, Puzzle Strike Bag of Chips from David Serlin and Serlin Games. And somewhere in the back, you, know, you can barely see it, it's Cousin Yomi. I'll probably bring those up with me because I definitely want to play those. So, uh, that's my test video uh, of my little tour of my uh, little uh, geek corner here. And so... I'll talk to you later. Till then, I'm the Game Show Man, Joe Van Ginkle, reminding you that reality bites. So watch more game shows. Bye for now.